Inelastic scattering of photons from acoustic phonons. Brilliant scattering. Show that the frequency of phonons emitted during inelastic scattering of photons in crystals is given by angular frequency of the phonon is twice the speed of sound, angular frequency of the incident uh, photon, index of refraction n of the crystal divided by the speed of light sine theta, where theta is the incidence angle. Now, in the process of inelastic scattering of a photon by a phonon in crystals, we have two possible outcomes. There can either be an absorption of a phonon, which is known as the anti-Stokes component of the scattered radiation, or we can have an emission of a phonon, which is known as Stokes component. So if the wave vectors of incident and scattered photons are k and k prime, and the corresponding angular frequencies are omega and omega prime, we can write the conservation of energy and crystal momentum in a one phonon process. So if we write the conservation of energy, the energy of the scattered photon h bar omega prime is equal to the energy of the incident photon h bar omega plus or minus h bar capital omega the energy of the phonon and if we write the uh, momentum conservation the momentum of the scattered uh, photon h bar k prime is equal to the momentum linear momentum of the incident photon h bar k we can have a possible h bar g reciprocal lattice vector g the recoil momentum of the crystal and plus or minus h bar capital K, where <clears throat> this is for the emission or absorption of a, a photon. Now, remember that uh, when we look at the wavelength in a crystal in a medium with index of refraction n, the wavelength is reduced to lambda over n, n is the index of refraction. So we have to keep that in mind. So here, capital K is the phonon wave vector, capital omega is the corresponding angular frequency of the phonon, capital G vector is the reciprocal lattice vector, and plus or minus sign shows absorption and emission uh, processes. So if you write the incident energy is equal to h bar omega prime plus h bar capital omega, you would see that you would be emitting a phonon. So the minus sign uh, on the right hand side corresponds to emission. The plus sign corresponds to absorption of a phonon. These two processes can be shown on a diagram. So we have the incident photon with wave vector k at an angle of incidence theta with respect to the crystal plane, scattered at an angle theta, specular reflection uh, at k prime, and in the process, a phonon is emitted with wave vector capital K, that's the Stokes process, or we can have a phonon being absorbed in the process, that's the anti-Stokes process. Now, <clears throat> if we talk about the maximum energy of a phonon, the maximum energy of a phonon, of course we're talking about acoustical uh, phonons here in this process, is h bar times capital omega maximum, which is equal to h bar omega dBi. So that's the dBi angular frequency. Now, what is the order of magnitude for the biangular frequency? Uh, we can look at uh, the previous problems. Omega dBi we calculated of the order of 10 to 14 radians per second. Uh, you can see the problem on silver and diamond, where we talked about Dulong Petit Law. Okay. So C, silver and diamond uh, problem. So let's go back to that problem. Uh, so here we calculated the Debye angular frequency for uh, silver uh, to be 
4 times 10 to 13 per, per second and for diamond we calculated 2.6 to 10 to 14 per second. So 10 to 14 radians per second is the order of magnitude for the Debye frequency. The H bar has a value, it's reduced Planck's constant, 1.055 times 10 to minus 34 joule seconds. Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. So if we look at the maximum energy a phonon can have, h bar omega d by, this is of the order of 10 to minus 2 electron volts. Now if we compare this energy to the energy of the incident photon, so as compared to incident uh, photon energy, What is the order of magnitude of the incident photon energy? This is uh, Planck's constant h uh, times the speed of light divided by uh, lambda. So it's hc over lambda. And that is, we calculated, uh, 6.63 times 10 to minus 34 joule seconds 3 times 10 to 8 meters per second speed of light in vacuum divided by lambda. So if lambda is in the order of angstroms, that is the order of magnitude for lattice constant of a crystal, we will find the photon energy of the order, let's see here, 1.24 times 10 to minus 6 divided by a lambda, and lambda is in the order of angstrom, so that's 10 to minus 10. So that gives us 10 to 4 when it goes upstairs. So it's 12.4 keV. These are basically x-rays. So uh, we can see that the order of magnitude for the energy of the phonon and the photon are quite different. So uh, if we go back to our energy equation, uh, this value is insignificant compared to h bar omega and h bar omega prime. Therefore, it follows that uh, we can basically approximate omega to be roughly equal to omega prime since the phonon energy is much less than the photon energy. Okay, <clears throat> now also, if we uh, calculate the capital omega as the speed of sound times the k, the wave vector k, because this is in the acoustical branch, and uh, we know that the speed of sound in a crystal is much less than the speed of the light uh, inside the crystal, c divided by n, so even for uh, k values that are comparable, because we have the speed of sound much less than the speed of light in the vacuum. So if we, even if we have the same k value here, because this is much less than c over n in the crystal, this omega would still be uh, small. So omega would still be much less than omega prime, okay? So this is a good approximation. Uh, the approximation, basically, omega is approximately the same as omega prime. And if we neglect the recoil momentum of the crystal, neglecting the recoil momentum of the crystal, h bar reciprocal lattice vector g, we find the following. <clears throat> so uh, this is our uh, crystal plane. This is our incident photon with wave vector k, angle of incidence theta. The k prime is the scattered photon with angular frequency omega prime. Uh, the angle of reflection is theta here. 
So we can see that a photon is emitted in this process with wave vector capital K. And this is basically a Stokes process we're talking about. And we can carry this K, uh, K prime vector here. So you can see that this makes an angle 2 theta with respect to the K vector. And the magnitude of the K vector is 2 pi n over lambda because it's inside the crystal. The wavelength is reduced. So we can see that we have a relationship here. Uh, K minus K prime is equal to the phonon wave vector, which comes from uh, this equation, basically, h bar g we have neglected. So we can see that uh, K minus K prime is equal to capital K for a phonon emission process. And this is an isosceles uh, triangle, we have the same uh, 2 pi n over lambda inside the uh, crystal. So we have a capital K over 2 on one side, capital K over 2 on the other side of this triangle. And this angle is theta, so we drop the perpendicular here. We can see that sine theta is capital K over 2 divided by K. So <clears throat> Since omega, the incident angular frequency is c over n, the speed of light inside the crystal multiplied by the wave vector of light inside the crystal. Uh, you know that when photons are changing a medium, their angular frequency doesn't change. So this is a 2n pi over uh, lambda, so n's cancel, so you have the same thing, 2 pi c over lambda, so it's the same uh, angular frequency. This we said is approximately equal to omega prime, which is c over n times k prime, and k and k prime are the same in magnitude. <clears throat> and we have seen that sine theta is capital K divided by 2K uh, in the Stokes process that we have considered. So capital K is 2K times sine theta. So capital K, the wave vector of the emitted phonon, is 2K where K is equal to 2N pi over lambda. So it is going to be... Uh, Capital K is 2K sine theta, which is 2. Uh, for K, I can substitute omega n over C. So this is n omega over C sine theta. And to go to the phonon angular frequency, I have to multiply it by the speed of sound. Speed of sound times K. This is basically... Uh, to speed of sound, index of refraction, omega divided by C, the speed of light multiplied with sine theta. So this is our emitted phonon angular frequency. So let's see what we did here. We're talking about brilliant light scatterings, inelastic scattering of photons from acoustic phonons. We are asked to show that the uh, angular frequency of the phonon is twice the speed of sound, angular frequency of the incident photon, index of refraction divided by speed of light sine theta. Uh, so we have seen that we have two types of processes a phonon can be emitted in the process of reflection from the crystal, that's the Stokes process, or a phonon can be absorbed, that's the anti-Stokes process. If we write the energy conservation, uh, the energy of the scattered photon is equal to energy of the incident photon plus or minus energy of the phonon. And a momentum conservation, the momentum of the uh, scattered uh, photon is equal to the incident photon momentum plus a possible recoil momentum from the crystal plus or minus h bar k, the momentum of the emitted or absorbed phonon. 
And we also recall that when light enters a medium with index of refraction n, its wavelength is reduced. Uh, so we have argued that the maximum energy of a phonon, which is h bar omega d by, is 10 to minus 2 eV in uh, order of magnitude, which is much less than the energy of the photon. So this can be neglected. We have omega prime approximately equal to omega. And uh, the angular frequency of the phonon is speed of sound times its wave vector k. Since the speed of sound is much less than the speed of light in the vacuum, even for comparable k values here, we will have omega much less than omega prime and therefore this can still be neglected. If we neglect the recoil momentum of the crystal, we find that for the Stokes process, uh, noting that k vector is 2 pi n over lambda within the crystal, we have k minus k prime is equal to capital K. So that comes from this equation. This is neglected. We have k minus k prime is equal to capital K when this is an emission process. That's a Stokes process. And if we drop a perpendicular here, because k and k prime have the same magnitude, we see that sine theta is capital K over 2K. So you can see here, uh, this angle is 2 theta. And the angular frequency of the incident photon is the speed of light in the crystal C over N multiplied by K approximately equal to omega prime and k and k prime are approximately equal in magnitude. So sine theta is capital K over 2k and for capital K we can substitute 2k sine theta where k is omega n over c and we obtain the required result noting that the angular frequency of the phonon is speed of sound times k. So that's the dispersion relation in the acoustic branch when we are far away from the brilliant zone boundary.